Well, hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. You saw the title up there. We're going to create this sort of 3D bubbly gradient text. It's pretty cool. It's very easy. I think you're really going to enjoy it. This is just like a nice, fun Illustrator tutorial. Shouldn't take very long. I think you're really going to like it. In fact, if you do like it, there's a little like button down there. Make sure you hit the like button. Just shows some love, helps YouTube know that we like this video. Let's get it up and up and up so everybody can see it. And if you enjoy the tutorials in general, I would love it if you would press wherever the button is, somewhere down there, the subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel. That way you never miss any more of these illustrator or graphic design tutorials in the future. And if you really enjoy the, uh, the channel and you're looking for a way to support us, well, first of all, thank you for thinking about it. Um, and also, you can pick up my graphic design sort of advanced Photoshop course I don't have any illustrator courses right now I'm working on one uh, maybe I'll work on multiples depending on how well the first one goes uh, but for now an advanced Photoshop course is a great way to go if you're a graphic designer. There's all kinds of cool stuff in there that you're going to learn, you're going to love, um, and some things you can work on in Photoshop. And, of course, you can take those same skills right over into Illustrator and do what you will uh, in Illustrator. Without further ado, let's check out this video. So you can see here this is an example of uh, some things that can be done. Really, it can be done with any letter, this particular effect. I particularly like a W, though, because a W just has a lot of sort of moving parts, and it's straight and simple and, and so beautiful to look at. Here's where it all begins. We're going to come up here to File and go New. I'm going to choose a simple 2560 by 1440 document. You can see 2560 by 1440. Go ahead and create that. It's just a nice size. I don't know. I like it. I, I've been I've been using it a lot lately. I'm going to hit my flyout menu here for my layers panel and choose panel options. And as I almost always do, just boost my thumbnails here to a 60 pixel size so we can see them and we can love them. We're going to jump over here to our rectangle tool and I'm going to right click on it to open up the pop out menu and choose the ellipse tool. And then I'm just going to click a single time and just go with the default 100 pixel by 100 pixel ellipse. Hit OK, and there it is. And we have a white filled ellipse with a black stroke per our fill and stroke choices here in the bottom of the tool panel. Uh, I'm going to click on the strokes. I'm actually going to click on it there in the uh, at the bottom of the tool panel. And I'm going to hit this little red slash down here. That gets rid of that stroke. And we want to also change the fill. So go ahead and hit this little swappy arrow right there. Well, I'm sorry, not the swappy arrow. What am I thinking? I'm thinking it's Photoshop. Yeah, just click directly on the fill. It's going to activate the fill. And we're going to choose the middle thumbnail here. It's the gradient. So that's going to fill it with a black to white gradient. Not really liking the black to white gradient. So let's um, come over here and take a look at our gradient panel. In fact, I'm just going to drag down so I can get a better look at my swatches here. And I think what I'll do is let's go with like a, an almost yellow to darker green gradient. That should be cool. So I'm going to drag this sort of yellowish spring green uh, to the one side of my gradient. And I'll go with a much, much darker green, almost a hunter green on the other side of my gradient. At this point, I can do a number of things. I can use the little angle drop down menu here. And I can just go like, let's go negative six. You can see it throws the lighter part of the gradient kind of up in the top left of my ellipse, darker part down there at the bottom. I think I kind of like that. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll drag this circle up here to the top of our document, and I'm going to hold down my Alt key, and I'm going to click and drag, and that's going to duplicate the circle. So I now have a duplicate of the circle I can drop anywhere. But before I let go of my mouse key, I'm also going to hold down the Shift key. This is going to allow me to drag a copy of the circle and constrain it in a straight line with that original circle. So you can see these ellipses, they're, they're just straight across from each other. So I'm just gonna nudge that in just a little bit. All right, so what I wanna do now is a play with what are called my blending options. These are located up under Object Blend. We'll choose Blend Options. And what we want to do is change the spacing from Adobe Illustrator's smooth color to specified steps. So we're gonna tell Illustrator how many copies of this circle to make in between these two circles. We're going to go crazy. We're going to go with a thousand. We want this to look like a perfectly smooth sort of pipe, if you will. What I can do now is select both of these circles. So just drag out a, uh, a selection over both ellipses. And I'm going to go back to object. Now when I go to uh, blend, I not only have blend options, but I have make blend. So I'm just going to choose to make that blend. And you can see what we've got. We've got this one straight long shape looks great. Now we need to uh, morph this into a letter. And this is where things get pretty cool. I'm going to grab my text tool here and I'm going to just click once 
and I think I'm going to add a capital W here to my uh, working area. I'm going to hit Command, Return, that'd be Control, Enter to commit the change. And then up here on my top control bar, I can change the sizing of it. So I'm going to try changing the font size to something like, I don't know, let's go 350. Let's make it huge. Nah, let's make it even bigger than that. Let's go 450 or, you know, I'm going to go an even 500. There we go. Something like that's probably cool. We could even make it bigger um, if we wanted to really go crazy. And you know what? Why not? Go big or go home, right? So there we go. We have our letter, letter W. And here's where we need to, well, number one, choose a good font, but then break it all down. So I'm going to collapse my color panel, and I'm going to double click here to open up my character panel. If you don't have your character panel out, you can go Window, Type, Character. This is all, as you can see, all of our text settings. Um, and I'm going to change the font. I'm going to choose, I know the font that I want. It's this one called Atom, Atom CG Pro. And the reason I like this, I believe it's a free font. Just run a Google search for it, Atom CG Pro. I am almost certain that it's free. The reason I like this font particularly is because it has points at the at the top and bottom and middles. Well, basically the, the bottom, middle, and top middle of the W. I don't really care about the flats up here. What I don't really want to deal with are big flat areas at the bottom of my W. So once we have our letter W, we'll right click on it and choose this option here, create outlines. So create outlines, and now we've gone from live editable text. We can no longer edit this using the character panel, so we can collapse that to just a shape, but if we right click again, it right now is a group. So if I, I'm just gonna collapse my swatches here, collapse the color, and open up my layers panel. If I open this up, you can see that the letter W is within a group. And if I open up the group, you can see there's really not much in there other than a compound path. So we need to do a couple things. Right click, choose to ungroup first of all, get rid of the group, and then right click and choose to release the compound path as well. This is just gonna make it a little bit easier to work with in just a second. We're going to select this W again. I just deselected it momentarily. And I want to do a couple things. I'm going to come up here to this top control bar and hover over. See this little thing here, align to selection. I want to click on that and make sure I have align to artboard chosen. And just align it to the horizontal and vertical centers. Just throw it right in the middle of my document. Great. Now I'm going to swap the fill and stroke. So now I am going to use those little swappy arrows. And you can see we've swapped the fill and the stroke. Here's where things get even more interesting. We're going to choose the direct selection tool up here at the top of our toolbar and click right on the path. And by the way, that whole outline comes up in the word path. See that, that little thing? That appears because here under view, I have smart guides turned on. I love smart guides. Some people hate them. They just get in the way. Um, I find them to be really, really useful. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on that little segment of path. I haven't selected any anchor points. I've just selected the actual piece of path. If I hit the delete key, you can see it deletes that piece of the path. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Select that. Well, I want to deselect. And then I'm going to select that piece of the path. Boom, delete that. And then I'm going to draw a selection just over sort of the middle triangle. Hit delete once and then delete another time. And we're left with just this sort of original base triangle. Now what I want to do is drag a selection over this anchor point. You can see we're just selecting this anchor point. See how it's solid blue, but like the anchor point up there, it's hollow. That's because this anchor point is selected. I'm going to hold down my shift key and hit my up arrow key like once, twice, something like that. And then I'm going to grab both of these anchor points. See how they're now solid blue and all the other three are hollow. Hold down shift and hit my down arrow key. I'm going to nudge these downward, 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 just till they're almost at the same height as the middle anchor point. And then what we need to do is select the bottom anchor points here. I'm just going to do one at a time. So I'm just grabbing the one to the left and we'll do the one to the right in just a second. Hold down shift and hit the uh, left arrow key. One, two, three, four, five, maybe six times. So we'll do that here. Shift and the right arrow key. One, two, three, four, five, six times. That looks uh, pretty cool. And then I'm going to, you know what? I, I kind of like the way the W is. I'm going to realign everything, make sure everything's lined up well. And at this point, we have our sort of base path that we're going to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to select both the blend that we created, hold down shift and drag a selection over the W as well, go object blend and choose to replace spine right there, replace spine. And what this is going to do is take our blend and sort of mesh it onto our W. Now the, the blend is not big enough and the W is too spread out. So if I select this and I just hold down my alter option key and I'm, I'm hovering here over one of these side anchor points and I sort of crunch it inward, what's going to happen is it's actually crunching my circles as well. Uh, so the whole sort of 3D pipe look looks really funky because they're no longer perfect circles. They're kind of becoming ovals that are blending together. So the trick is if you open up your blend over here in the layers panel and you select just the path, and I'm selecting just the path by actually clicking on that little circle in the layers panel. If you select just the path and you morph or transform that path, you can see that we never touch the circles, just the path. So the blend sort of 
re-renders itself a little bit. And I think something like that, maybe I'll maybe get them a little bit taller. Something like that. That's pretty cool. Now, let's say we want to make the actual blend itself bigger, the circles, the, the, the diameter of the pipe, if you will, larger. Well, this is actually not too complicated either. We'll go to the direct selection tool, and we can select either the starting or finishing ellipse, and it's either one of these two ellipses here. So I can go with this ellipse. You can see it's the, the beginning ellipse. And up here in the control bar, we have a width and a height. Let's try changing this to like 350. So we'll go 350 width and then go 350 height. And you can see how much bigger it's gotten, just one circle. So let's grab the other ellipse and let's go 350 and 350 as well. So you can see immediately we start to get huge, bulbous, sort of bubbly text uh, just by making those ellipses larger. And something we can do to throw additional sort of uh, visual something into this is select one of the ellipse. Let's maybe go to the end ellipse and we'll change the angle of this gradient. Maybe instead of negative 60, we'll make it positive 60. And you can see it totally changes the way the W is drawn. I don't really like that though. Maybe I'll go like 120, something like that's not too bad. I might go a little higher, 135. Eh, maybe even 150. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. So something like that, you can do that. We can select the entire blend, right? And we could go Object, Blend, and we can reverse the spine, which you'll see that makes it look quite a bit different. I'm just going to grab my regular selection tool. You can grab the whole blend, and we could go Blend, Reverse, Front to Back. That's going to change the way it lurk, looks. So it, there's all kinds of different things you can do. I'm going to go Object, Blend, and I'm going to try reversing the spine once again. And you can see, I mean, it just, that actually kind of looks crazy. I like the original, so I'm going to undo a few times. I'm going to just stick with that. I don't know if it's because I looked at it first and it just, you know, it looks right to me or what, but it looks right to me. So another thing you can do other than just changing the color of, uh, or I'm sorry, the angle of the gradient is change the color of the gradient. So I'm going to choose this ellipse here. I've selected it right here in the layers panel. It's the rear ellipse, if you will. And I'll go ahead and change the color. So I'm going to double click to open my swatches panel. I'm going to select, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll use the color panel here. I'm going to select my light green. And I think I want to try to make this more of like a cyan almost. So let's take this over and make it cyan. And then I'm going to go to my darker green and I'm going to make this kind of a darker uh, cyan color. So I'll do something like this. Maybe push it back toward the green a little bit more. Make it even darker. Something like that, that's pretty cool. And that kind of meshes really neatly into the other green. In fact, if I want this cyan to be in the front, maybe I'm looking at it and I'm like, ah, the green really would look better in the back. We can select this, go object, blend, and sometimes I get it mixed up, but I'm pretty sure reverse front to back is just what the doctor would order. So you can see it now moves this blend. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that just sort of restacks it the other way. Let's try, let's go object, blend, reverse spine. There we go. And now we can see the sort of front, although we would need to go object blend, re uh, reverse front to back as well. There we go. And that throws the green in the back and puts our cyan up front. And probably we would at this point have to go in and adjust the angle of the gradient back here. Maybe take this back down to our negative 60. You can see that looks much, much better. So it's a little bit of going in and tweaking and messing around with it. Honestly, I still kind of forget uh, what exactly they do sometimes when you're sort of in the heat of the moment and just going and pushing and pulling things around. But this looks pretty cool. And, you know, you can do it to virtually any letter. You can see I did it to a G. I did more W's here because I just, you know, like I said at the beginning, I kind of like the W. I think it looks cool. Uh, but you can go ahead. You can use this effect on all sorts of things. It doesn't really just have to be letters. It can be all sorts of geometric shapes. You can have a ton of fun with it. Um, I've done a, a similar tutorial to this where we used more like cursive letters um, and did some blending to replay or, or to, to find the exact center of some different letters. Uh, so all kinds of cool stuff you can do with this particular style. If you do use this, this style in a piece of artwork or something, do make sure you upload it to Instagram and tag me. I'll put my little Instagram handle here. It's at Tutvid, T-U-T-V-I-D. Uh, just tag me in the image. You don't need any kind of elaborate shout out. I would just love to see what you're making. Um, I love seeing what you guys are making on Instagram, interacting with you, liking, commenting, all that good stuff. It's always a whole bunch of fun. And also make sure, like I said before, like the tutorial you know, if you liked it, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more of these graphic design tutorials in the future, and for creating this 3D bubble text in Adobe Illustrator and using the blending features and scaling a blend without actually crunching those ellipses or whatever shapes you're blending. Remember, this doesn't have to be uh, a circle you use. It could be all kinds of different shapes for all kinds of different crazy effects and gradients and angles and everything else. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, touchvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.